Salwete omnes, this is Emily also known as the Martian Geek, and some of you who watched my channel back in 2013 might recall a video I'd made showing off a patch I'd made called the Layer 3 Customizer, which allowed you to insert custom Layer 3 images into Hex. Lunar Magic actually supports Layer 3 editing now, so the patch isn't really necessary anymore. But I've been thinking for a while that it might be a good idea to do a more modern version of that video anyway, both because its production quality was lacking at best, and because it did show off some things that you can't do in Lunar Magic, at least not Lunar Magic alone, you need some sort of external code such as Uber ASM. So for anyone who saw the original video, this is basically just the same new thing, the same thing with the fresh new coat of paint, more concise, some tweaks made to some of the graphics, music, and dialogue, no more outdated information, and hopefully a lot less cringy. For anyone who didn't see the original, well, here's a demonstration of some of the things you can do with Layer 3. So, let's go. Starting off with... Complete in level 105 edit? Oh no! You can see the extra layer of clouds in the background there, though that is indeed Layer 3. It's actually just the original cloud background from Super Mario World, but converted to 2BPP, so it'll work with Layer 3. I believe somebody actually submitted that to the graphics section, but I did it first. So, yay me, I guess. And yeah, there aren't any eyes on the clouds due to palette limitations. Beyond that, it's basically just bog-standard Yoshi's Island 1 stuff. Somebody needs to make a hack that's literally just the original Super Mario World, except Yoshi's Island 1 has a Layer 3 background, and a door. Hey, I thought of an idea for my next C3 project. The moderators will love it. Anyway, moving on to some new territory. With a Super Mario Bros. 1 themed level, you can see the clouds in the background. Also Layer 3, obviously. And yeah, it's just a plain old Layer 3 background. Nothing amazing nowadays, but in 2013 that was actually something special. And for another just plain old Layer 3 background, we have this. I ripped this one from Donkey Kong Country 3, if you couldn't tell from the music anyway, or, you know, just the graphics. Because another good use of Layer 3 backgrounds is when you have an interactive Layer 2 foreground, such as these moving platforms here. Then you actually get to have a decent background, especially if it's from Donkey Kong Country, because the Donkey Kong Country trilogy has some really good Layer 3 graphics. And moving on, we have Yoshi's Island! This one demonstrates that you can also put the Layer 3 image in front of the Layer 2 one. Though the scrolling for this one is a little bit wonky, because at least at the time of this recording, there is no setting in Lunar Magic that allows you to have Layer 3 scroll at half the rate of the regular Layer 1 foreground, and half the rate is normally what a background scrolls at, while also having Layer 2 scroll at half the rate of Layer 3. I don't know why there isn't a setting for that, at least among ones that Fusoya added or something. But it is what it is. I guess you can always write custom scrolling code if you want to. It's also worth noting that this Layer 3 cloud image actually uses 16x16 16 16 tiles rather than 8x8, as Super Mario World does. Yoshi's Island uses 16x16 16 16 tiles for both of its background layers, and I basically just ported the tile map directly. Didn't bother to convert them to 8x8 8 8 because I didn't feel like taking the time and it wouldn't actually make it look any different. And speaking of Yoshi's Island stuff, we have more Yoshi's Island stuff. This time it's the Blizzard from 5.1. Everyone's favorite snow effect. It gets more intense as you've progressed through the level. So this shows off that you can also put the Layer 3 image in front of the foreground, and you can do some nifty color math tricks to make it look like it's getting more intense like this. And speaking of Layer 3 images from Yoshi's Island that go in front of the foreground, Spotlight Effect! Used in some cave levels and at least one fortress level in Yoshi's Island. And this shows that you can also make it follow the player, which of course would be necessary if you want the spotlight effect. I've actually used this one in at least one hack, in at least one level, I forget if it was anywhere else. But yeah. And now we have an underwater level which is our first interactive Layer 3 image. It's the water from Super Mario Bros. 3 that showed up in all the water levels. Unless 3 or 6, 9 counts as a water level, I guess. It, it does, but it doesn't have the same thing. 
point is, this would be really good to use if you're making a Super Mario All-Star style hack, where you want Super Mario Bros. 3 water levels, and to have the water not cover the, enti the entire screen, as in Super Mario Bros. 3. Also, if I may take a, t a bit of time to rant, Interactive Layer 3 in Super Mario World is kind of janky. It's kind of hackneyed together, basically the game treats it as if it were an Interactive Layer 2, which results in a lot of Layer 3 things being dependent on Layer 2 things. For instance, in one hack, which carried over to subsequent hacks due to things breaking without it, I actually had to add an extra hijack and flag so that... or because there's a level with Layer 3 that was interactive and vertical scrolling, and honestly, interactive foreground layers other than one don't really like vertical scrolling in general because Nintendo can't code. But the layer 3 in that level was actually using the layer 2 Y position to determine which part of it interacted. And it will usually do that anyway, so layer 3 is actually the only layer that when it's interactive, the graphics for it don't necessarily match up with the hitbox. It's dumb as crap and I hate it. If anyone wants to make a patch to fix that, be my guest. But anyway, rant over and we're moving on to a new level with Interactive Layer 3 Lava. Just for demonstration purposes, yeah, it does kill you. This shows that you can put tiles on Layer 3 that aren't water, even though water was all the original game ever did. I believe the graphics were done by La Di Da, I think they're actually... He actually drew them quite a while ago, I remember them showing up in a castle level in Bonnie's Quest. And yeah, we have some color math going on. We had that in the previous level, too. And hey, it's more Layer 3 water. This time it goes up and down. Not in the same way that it does in Mondo in the original game, but it's the same basic concept. And for some reason the animation is still screwed up. I don't know what's up with that. I didn't care enough about it to fix it. <laughs> Actually, I didn't bother updating a lot of the resources I used when doing this either. Aside from Mad Music, which was just breaking out right for the old version, I pretty much just used all the same patches and code and all. Also, the clouds in the background aren't layer three, aren't layer three. they're just parallax. The layer two background that I used for this level is definitely set up in such a way that parallax would be really helpful. So I decided to add it because it makes it look better. Only transition between levels where the music and graphics don't change, and we have more layer three water. It doesn't move this time. But we also have something extra in the background. We see those little turquoise hills up there. Those are also layer 3. And this one shows splitting it between the foreground and background. So we have the interactive layer 3 water on the foreground, and we have the hills in the background. Also, yeah, the top scan line is a little bit glitchy. I think that's a side effect of the patches I used to get rid of the status bar because it was getting in the way. Again, I didn't really care enough to try to fix that. <laughs> oh, sorry. Speaking of glitches that I didn't care to fix, that pallet thing is still happening, or mosaic, or whatever it is. We have yet more layer 3 water, can you tell I like these graphics? But this time, we also have lava on the ceiling. And again, it does kill you. It also makes you swim in the bottom tile. That's not a glitch with my code, or with the patch, or lunar magic for that matter. That's a bug in the original game, for whatever reason, only the top of the lava tiles actually act like lava, and the rest of it acts like water. Like I said, <laughs> Nintendo's code is questionable sometimes. My original plan for this level in the original video was that the water and lava would actually move up and down separately via HDMA or IRQ or something, but I ended up scrapping that and I didn't care to replicate it for this one. Honestly, Mode 7 gets all the press as far as Super Nintendo hardware stuff or, yeah, hardware stuff goes, but HDMA is so useful. Probably more general. It probably has more general purpose use than Mode 7. Anyway, moving on to a nice level. We have even more Super Mario Bros. 3, Layer 3 Water. Don't worry, this is the last time we'll see it. The gimmick with this one is we can turn it into ice by hitting these blocks, and we can walk on the ice. Naturally, it's slippery because ice. And if you wait a while, it turns back into water. This shows that you can also put custom blocks on Layer 3. It does require a slight extra step compared to water or lava, but 
Actually, any blocks that aren't on page 0 would require that extra step whether they're custom or not, so if you put a muncher on layer 3, you'd have the same thing going on. I suppose if you wanted to put custom blocks on page 0, you could do that, but I don't think anyone's ever done that, and for good reason. Moving on. We have this mechanical area. And we have a giant laser beam coming through. This is inspired by a level from Mega Man Zero 4, which is also what the music is from. In that, you were climbing into the barrel of a particle cannon, so you had this huge laser beam coming through inter intermittently, and basically destroying everything in its path. It did a lot of damage to you, but of course it just hurts you in this version, since Super Mario World doesn't have an HP system by default. And yeah, I have a cheat code on, so that Mario will always be big. It comes in handy for demonstrating things that damage you, like this as well as something that we'll get into shortly. I couldn't decide whether I wanted the laser, the laser beam to be in front of the foreground or behind it. I decided on behind for this video, and I believe it was in front for the original, but it doesn't matter too much either way. Moving on to a cutscene. I don't know what's up with the dialogue box glitching out there, it's weird. Hiya, Mario! Who are you, and how do you know my name? I'm Kami-chan, Magic Koopa Sorceress in Training. And everyone knows your name, Mario. The hero of the Mushroom Kingdom, the savior of the land, the rescuer of Princess Toadstool. <laughs> also, yeah, I'm not doing their voices this time. Sorry. Remember, we're trying to make this less, tr less cringy. Okay, I'll give you that, but what are you doing in our kingdom? Well, everyone here knows about running and jumping. They are absolutely enamored of your jumping abilities but nobody ever seems to appreciate magic. Oh, I know the princess is said to have magical power on par with Bowser. <laughs> really? Why does she still get kidnapped so often then? Some powerful magician. Now wait just a minute. And most of all, nobody ever appreciates Layer 3, an entire extra layer of graphics practically ignored. It's a travesty. How often do you see custom Layer 3 backgrounds and hacks, hmm? Or scenery that goes over the foreground, or an extra interactive layer? I'll tell you, about as much as you see anyone in the Mushroom Kingdom doing magic. What's the matter for you? People can't just use Layer 3 anywhere or anytime they want, you know. I mean, there's a status bar to worry about. That Baka Goon status bar? It messes everything up. Do you see one in Yoshi's Island? No, and it was perfectly fine. Besides, a lot of things you'd use it for. Can't you just use sprites instead? Yeah, because running out of OAM slots, it's the best thing ever! But at least with the sprites, you get 16 colors per palette. With layer 3, it's only 4. That's why we have multiple palettes, obviously. Still, though, 4 colors? I just don't know. You want our lovely kingdom to look 8-bit or something? 8-bit? Well, that does it. I'll introduce you all to a real sor uh, sorceress. I'll show you the true power of layer 3. My tides will sweep you away. I will carry you off with my winged cage of destiny. I put the smash in layer 3 smash. But after I'm through with you, Mario, the only four color palette you'll be seeing is the four shades of black and blue your face will be. Wait, what do you even mean? I thought you were a mage, not a melee fighter. Oh, stop diverting the subject. That sounded better in my head anyway. Now, have at you. So yeah, it's time to fight Kami-chan, or Chen? I've never quite been sure how that suffix is supposed to be pronounced. Not to be confused, of course, with the Japanese word for god, which I believe is Kami. I imagine if her name were ever translated into Japanese, it would probably come out as Kameko or something like that. Also, believe it or not, her boss music is actually inspired by Satori's theme from Toho 11. The original title of it was even Mode 1 Maiden 3rd Layer. So the way this boss battle works is Kami-chan will appear and disappear. She'll do three normal attacks and then one special one. And she starts off with only one special attack she can do, these lasers, which of course use layer 3 as all of her special attacks do because that's her stated power after all. And once you start hitting her, she gains more attacks that she can use. So let's see if we can... Oh sure, appear directly under the platform, you would do that twice in a row. Okay, so we're getting more of her first attack because I can't get to her in time. 
There we go. So yeah, after you hit her, she gains a new attack and then immediately performs that attack. And now she can randomly choose that one in addition to the others. So now every time she does a special attack, she'll randomly pick either the giant thwomp or the lasers that we saw. So like, right there she wanted to do the lasers. And you might notice with the thwomp it actually uses proper graphics now instead of the primitive wireframe I had before. Yeah, let's see if we can get her to do that again. Nope, she wants to do the lasers. I want to show the thwomp again, darn it. Just wait, I suppose. There we go. It's not a perfect one-to-one -one relationship with what the 16 color version of it would be. A couple of the tiles did have more than three colors on them. But I think I got pretty close. Again, like Kami, you know, like Kami chan said, multiple palettes can be useful with layer 3 stuff. So she has two more attacks if I can get her to do them. There we go. Her third attack is another laser beam, a different kind this time. And one more. Uh, not quite soon enough. It's worth noting her aura also hurts you. Also, this is the main reason I wanted that cheat code on, because her attacks can be difficult to dodge at times. She's not really intended to be like an actual playable boss battle. If she were, I'd definitely have her telegraph stuff a lot better, and I'd change probably quite a few aspects of this battle actually, but for now it's just demonstration purposes. I imagine she'll probably show up in a real hack at some point, maybe just as a cameo, uh, cameo maybe as an optional boss, Maybe it's just a random meme fight, who knows. Have to see how it goes. Well, you quit appearing direct- there we go. So, time for her fourth attack, which is a bunch of poison gas. Originally this stuff caused your controls to be reversed, but I realized that didn't actually show up on the recording. And also the code for it, for whatever reason, was not working correctly in the new version. So now the poison gas attack just obscures your vision. Again, it's probably something I'd do differently if I made her into a real boss. So now she has all four of her special attacks. I guess we'll show them off a little bit longer. Of course I didn't draw her graphics myself, I had to request those. Because I am not a graphics person, trademark symbol. Wow, she is really liking to use those lasers. I also made a sampled version of her boss theme. I forget if I ever got it finished and polished or not. It's the kind of thing you don't really submit to the music section anyway. I'll give her... okay, we'll get... whoops! Almost jumped on her accidentally. I'll give her one or two more specials. And... thwomp! Okay, one more and then... yeah. Of course, I had to change the tile map of layer 3 on the fly during this boss battle. Which also required a bit of setup. Okay, she wants to do the lasers again. You're not gonna show off your poison gas one more time? I've had her do that one four times in a row before, so... Uh, she wants to do the thwomp again? Okay, well... And she's down. So there we go. I survived the layer 3 gauntlet, because I had a cheat code, and all I got was this lousy message box, which, which incidentally also uses layer 3, and I think it has incorrect width settings for some of the characters. But yeah, that's everything. Layer 3, you can do stuff with it. Really, you can do anything with it, at least as far as the Super Nintendo is concerned. What? How do I trigger that? You can do anything with it that you can do with layer 1 or 2, aside from have more than 4 colors per palette. But, as I said before, in Super Mario World, it's kind of janky, I guess, like I said. Nintendo's code is not as good as you'd think, given how renowned they are in the industry. But yeah, that's everything. We'll just head back to the overworld now. Thanks for watching.